much different format than we have ever had in the past, but it's still the games, and that means we are in for a very tough and a very complete test of fitness. I tell you what. Gabby Magala is going to win event five. There's a Dahlstrom and a half in the back right now. This girl is amazing. Jackal Challenges are always going to present themselves. There will always be another athlete who chooses to go their own way. There will be moments when other programs are more popular or more successful. But what we have learned is that as long as we keep doing what we love and give back to the community that has supported us, we can keep growing and thriving and overcome any of these obstacles or challenges. We'd had um, Gabby and Christoph move over in order to kind of form what we wanted to do as more program based. So after the years of traveling around, we wanted to make Mallorca our base. Good morning, guys. It's still early morning. So I think only one of the guys is up. But we're going to head there now. And Gabby and Christoph coming over was kind of the first step in that. Name, so the little one's gray wolf, the little gray one. <laughs> They kind of signed to rent, they hadn't got a bed or anything, and then it was like, boom, we go into to lockdown. You moved out to Spain and they shut the country down. How did that make you feel? I don't know, like, I was uh, hoping for, like, uh, start my life. You know, retrospectively, obviously everything was affected for a number of years, but at that moment in time, they're like, hey, you've got to go back to your homes for a week. It's like, fine, you know. We were like, okay, maybe we take a deload, maybe we don't. Be like, you know what, let's just take some stuff back from C23. We'll all stay at um, the farm. Um, and that's kind of where, how lockdown started. One thing we could also do is like put the rope, like tie it on the bottom there and you kind of have to do like rope climbs with your feet as well on the wall. But I think this works. In essence, kind of the first week went by, it was kind of a bit of a novelty, you were staying at home, no one knew how much was gonna go on. Then like, hey, next week, next week next week if we got like it's going to be like this for three months you would have like prepared for three months but it was like two weeks at a time every time uh and that was you know just never knowing kind of what was happening i i, I don't know just say yes at uh, what well, well i'm it's like competition. i need the sanctional season to start for before i can even go to any games so for me it's more important that some sanctional will happen and right now we're not sure if they're going to be in the sanctional events either. And I think both at that stage, like Gabby, Jacqueline, you know, they weren't really on the, the worldwide map of CrossFit. And I think lockdown was a bit of a changing moment for that. We, um, you know, we worked really hard during lockdown. It's honestly like throughout the lockdown, I just train and I train hard. Uh, and this was because we didn't know what was going to happen. So I stayed kind of, we stayed on, I stayed ready to compete in case I had the chance of competing. And I think that's kind of like a perfect example of turning what could possibly be um, a difficult situation into an opportunity. And, and I think that we came out of lockdown strong because of that. It was just kind of like the, the mentality, we just trained basically, we spent, we just, I was, I ended up being in very good shape uh, during lockdown, because uh, nothing else to do. Um, it was a bit, you know, obviously it's not the same as training in the gym. Uh, we didn't have a bar, so we couldn't do like pull-ups and chest to bars and stuff like that. But we, we got some rings in the tree and like yeah, legless rope climbs in another tree. Other, another tree.
From an athlete side point, like standpoint, it was actually really beneficial. We, we managed to, I would say, actually improve the level during that time. And we really set the foundations for what we're going to become by the 21-22 season. It's good with like a kick in the butt sometimes. Like you do learn through, you know, adversity. And I found that like the times I've been at the lowest, I have managed to come back even stronger. You know, even now I look at things kind of pre-COVID and post-COVID. And because of what we did during that lockdown phase, and I would say make kind of the opportunity out of the situation, that did lay the foundation for, for where we went in the following years. It's got to be said that, you know, we're still feeling the effects of COVID in 2021. And however, things have got a bit loose in terms of the regulations, meaning we can bring more athletes over. So as part of forming the base um, of the program, you know, we, we brought a number of athletes over for semi-finals and to do everything together. Um, they announced the semi-finals are going to be online, which uh, kind of changed the dynamic a little bit because, you know, it's a lot of work working with athletes as a coach. But we had so many athletes here that we also kind of had to flip into being an event organizer just because of the quantity of athletes. Was it like six, seven semi-final athletes like training together from January until semis? We were, you know, very tight as a group and we had a good push. And I do think also we did learn the lesson that it might get too much and too intense. It was just like finding that balance of um, being a training group, but not necessarily having to compete against each other every day. Everything worked out extremely well. And, you know, through that stage, we ended up getting Gabby and Jacqueline to, it, in essence, like their first proper games. Finally, we'd gone back to the old format, kind of qualifying from regionals, which are now semis, and you get 40 athletes at the games. And it's like, okay, you know, now we've got our opportunity to show the work that we've been doing. I'm gonna go to games uh, with the goal of making myself proud and do as good as I can do in every workout. I have an uh, official uh, email that me and Jack can qualify officially. Jacqueline and Gabby are qualified to games, perfect. But actually there's still all these travel restrictions, so you can't freely travel into the US. <clears throat> so this leaves this whole uncertainty, you know, we put in all this work, it's been a number of years now, they're finally gonna get their real games experience, but can we get into the US? Where, where are we? In Madrid, only in Madrid, still in Europe. Still in Europe. CrossFit managed to get the exemption, um, and we kind of get our go ahead to travel through. Eventually I find this like CrossFit gym, big Airbnb to house us all. And it ends up being in this town called uh, Plymouth um, in like Northern Wisconsin. And honestly, we just had like such a welcoming, um, like, like a welcoming party from the, the guys who were there. It's, it's a smaller town um, and you didn't have that um... You're close to Madison, but you're not in Madison. So even though, you know, the games is getting real, you don't have that constant stress and the reminder of like seeing other athletes around all the time. Uh, and we we had a really good setup there where we uh, lived at the, at the trout farm. And it was actually like the CrossFit gym was ironically in a foam factory where they, the kind of owner had been super passionate about um, CrossFit. So he kind of dedicated the space for the workers and some people in the town. Living real life again in this post COVID time. And in essence, the weekend goes great. Like both Jacqueline and Gabby exceed the expectations. Gabby ends up, you know, punching us, her spot in the top 10 of the world. And that kind of uh, cements her place on the, on the CrossFit world map. And 
Jack ends up placing her in, in the top 20, again, kind of solidifying her as one of the best athletes in the world. And I, I think that was like the first time when we'd seen the, the work of the previous two years start to pay off. From the start, I've always been very passion driven, and which is a blessing in, in lots of ways, but it also makes the financial very hard. So you know, I'm super passionate about um, being able to support athletes and watch them grow. But how do we set a foundation where we can, you know, I know that in order to give a better service to the athletes, we need to bring in more people. In order to bring in more people, we need to be able to pay them. So this kind of set, like, you know, there's like a few stepping stones of how you end up um, putting this all, all together. And it's not just about paying someone, you've got to have someone who is passionate, who has those same values, who wants to um, kind of grow the sport and grow the athletes in the same way that you do. I mean, without question, I realized that um, alone that's that's not going to be possible. Managing multiple athletes at a high end is it's very challenging. And therefore, we needed someone or an excellent set of coaches to come on board and make sure everything is supported in that way. He had this luxury problem where he had like too many individual athletes. In 2020, we had a super team qualify. On that super team was a guy called Joshua. And obviously because of the, all the changes, the super team qualified to games, but never got to live that games experience. Um, but working with Joshua was a guy called Chris. He's been fittest in Germany a couple of times and he went to the games in 2019. And uh, I wanted to pursue more of a career in CrossFit, especially in coaching. And then we got along very well and I decided to move to Flensburg and kind of dedicate my life to CrossFit. Look, Chris is, is relatively young, but also I think uh, has a very good understanding of the sports and brings a very like objective uh, point of view. So at that time, he was then starting to help me work with Solveig. He was also starting to help work with Moritz and kind of become this like uh, support network for these new athletes that we have coming through. Around semis last year, um, I get multiple messages from uh, this guy called Doom, who uh, he wants to you know come and have me on his podcast. And, and it's not uncommon to, for, for me to get messages asking for coaches to come and shadow. During the podcast, I noticed that I want to do exactly what John is doing, but without having that, yeah, let's say responsibility of building an own brand. And usually people have to be quite persistent in order to, uh, to get through. Dom was definitely persistent in that, uh, in that regard. I was getting on his nerves and I was asking if he needs a coach. At first he was like, no, I don't need anyone. And I was staying consistent and uh, getting on his nerves and I shadowed him and yeah, now I'm here. The, the thing that I saw with Dom was someone who's so passionate about wanting to coach athletes, wanting to be able to help, and was really living that like 100% passion driven. The biggest thing what coaching gives me is to be with the athletes on the competition floor, see that their hard work we both put together paid off. And so then Dom became someone who was really supporting the, um, you know, these up and coming athletes who are coming through and through and through. And from this moment, we're now 2022, Gabby ends up um, winning Europe through quarterfinals, ends up placing like podium again at semis. Jack ends up winning her semis. We've created this momentum and this flow that really moved through. And that was kind of what was happening on the surface. We've got a lot of momentum, athletes smashing it, doing really well. Uh, but beneath that, there's also a lot of uh, structure happening. So we've also got to remember that in this time, there's more athletes coming up and through. And so these kind of surface athletes who we've built the foundations over the last few years, we now also have Moritz coming on board 
and Solveig coming on board. I've just been kind of like freelancing, or I was kind of just freelancing until I met John. Sola is someone who's been in the sport for a number of years, been to the games on a team, and because she's Icelandic, she tends to fall under the, um, the radar because you've got you know, Annie, Katrin, Sarah, the big three who kind of take all that boom. I was looking for something a little bit more um, individualized. I wanted um, a little bit more focus on like a program for me because how am I going to get better if I'm just doing the same program as everybody else? She came on board and sometimes those connections just work. A few months after coming on board, we all went to Madrid and she ended up winning like her first big competition. And I think that gave her the confidence and momentum. So, you know, those changes that she'd made had really worked. Solveig ended up got, uh, placing in strength and depth, which is the final weekend with Jacqueline. And we knew that she needed to execute in order to, to punch a ticket. You know, you've also got one of the famous Icelandic daughters there. You know, she's competing against Katrin, multiple times games athlete, has won the CrossFit Games. Before the semi-final, we trained a lot together. I think that what's really developed me as an athlete, um, to be able to see where I'm at compared to like, obviously compared to Jacqueline, because like she's a really good athlete and see that I'm not like, any less or like I can I can still like keep up and stuff and like give me like confidence. And I think that for her really solidified, you know, I'm here to compete. I'm I'm one of the best Icelandic athletes, one of the best athletes in the world, and it kind of put her onto that main stage. So and part of that support network, you know, is um, Chris being there able to make sure that we kind of have you know, it's not just it's not just me, but we have a network. You no, know, we have a web. We have this whole support structure that allows athletes to do what they're going to do. You know, that's really our baseline of everyone behind the scenes. Is how can we optimize the life of the athletes, optimize the performance of the athletes, so they can perform. This year, at the, before the semi-finals, I wrote um, John a message. I gave him a voice message. You know, Moritz is obviously what we would call like the fringe, the fringe games athlete. He's obviously very talented. And I think that he was aware that doing everything by yourself is extremely challenging. I know that I just have to do it and don't ask silly questions and don't do silly things. <laughs> and so that is the main thing I think I um, yeah, knew about these relationships. And then I got invented to, to John. I asked him how to peak for the semifinals. And he was like, ah, come next week to Mallorca for a semifinal camp. Yeah, and that is how, how it started. And from there on, we just didn't talk any more about it, but I was a part of the program, yeah. I invited Morris down to um, the semifinal camp here in Mallorca. And, you know, I think it was a, a challenging experience for him. First workout at the semi-final camp, every 20 minutes, 10 or 8K on rowing, skiing, biking. That was the most, I hated this workout. Normally I do like 60 minute MRAP, 40 calorie on the front runner and 40 calorie on the road, for example. But nothing like long things like this. But thank you very much, I know what I uh, have to work <laughs> But he rose to the challenge and, you know, Moritz, I think, you know, had like, it is what like regionals were made in back in the day. It like showed me that, you know, with semis, we're kind of here back in regionals. He's doing really well through the weekend, but he's never entered the qualifying spots to the top five. You know, in essence, it was simple for the final. All he had to do was go out there and win it. He... You know, he wasn't in control of anything else, but he did need other people to mess up because they had more points than him. But the only thing he could control was doing his best job. So he's out there and it's like a classic sprint final um, at, at regionals, at semis, where 
You know, you've got these 100 kilo overhead squats. And Moritz just understood that if he wants to achieve his dream, he's going to have to go out there and send it. And I changed my clothes, had my ice bath, went back to the venue, had like chest up and was all the time, I am the fire, I am the fire, Ooh. I am the all the time. Till there, I had like goosebumps and I was like, I will crush the event. Your goal happens in this moment and that moment is kind of captured you know there's there's so much behind the scenes work that's gone in over the years the doubt the training the sacrifice and then you just have these moments and i think for moritz you know knowing that he won the workout knowing that he did what he did and then punching his ticket to the games through that is like is that's what one of the special um the special things that happens in in competition and i've been lucky enough to you know be able to help athletes achieve that a few times and uh, and I, I think that's what kind of keeps me going is seeing that uh, that joy that they get achieving that goal in that moment. I feel like the program um, got better and better since we uh, since I, I got into the program at the semis camp here in Mallorca and um, Carmen is on board all the coaches all the media stuff all the media guys thank you so much <laughs> by the way um, and this is really helpful because Carmen is taking care of like sponsors, for example, and I uh, don't have to worry about too much about how, how I can um, secure my income. The kind of financial and business aspect of an athlete is also very important because it's not just about having like great training, great environment to train, but you also need to be able to live, put food on the table, you know, make sure you can get a massage, uh, travel to competitions without stress. And that's where we brought in uh, the program management. And in essence, it was that you know, the focus was again, very in line with our mission statement in supporting athletes become the best they can be. It's just that this support becomes uh, as a financial base for them in order that they can survive, they can thrive and, you know, in essence, live that life as an athlete. Um, then the media stuff is good because I don't have to think about, ah, I have to do a post with all the sponsors because now I have like a lot of content. And as you guys know, content is key, right? <laughs> um, so to answer your question, the program helps me in everything and I'm really, really appreciating this. And we're now moving to this place where, you know, as an athlete, you can make a very good living. You can dedicate yourself to just think about training. And that really pushes the sport to new dimensions. If all you have to do is train and compete, it simplifies a lot of things. When you start having to do more and more things, it can take away from that, um, that objective. And that actually had us um, qualify five individual athletes for the CrossFit Games. I felt proud of, of what we managed to do and what we managed to achieve. And it, you know, it also, you know, it also made me hungry to, to, to build this and build more and, and be able to support more athletes in achieving their dreams. Going into the games as a rookie or going into the games as a veteran, a, a different, for, you know, you're necessarily got one thing, that the people who've been there before have a number they want to beat. So, you know, they're not going to the games to experience the games, they're going to the games to compete at the games. So, so there is a bit of a mindset change as you go through the, the athletes who've been there for a number of years. So um, you've obviously got Gabby who plays top 10, Jack who plays top 20. I mean, being in those categories in the world is by no means easy. Like, you're like, with, you know, the best athletes in the world competing in something that everyone is good at, talented for, and working hard. Score one to the youngsters in the front, Hardy in the back, and of the night for the win. You, sir. There is no doubt. Currently, the scoring system of CrossFit is biased to winning. And when I say biased to winning is that you get, you get even, even though you've won, which is an achievement, you get even more rewarded for that win. If you can get an event win, you all of a sudden can jump 20 points, 30 points quite easily on your nearest competitor. Able to be an event winner 
it can boost you um, not only in the points but also in kind of your media following and all of these things. People love to see the event wins. We've been doing a lot of uh, running work and actually at the track where we were yesterday, you know, that was kind of like classic stuff we've been doing. Running, odd objects to go through. And so the first event of the CrossFit Games that's announced is the Capitol. Odd objects, run, odd objects. And I, I instantly knew, I was like, okay, you know, Gabby's gonna, Gabby's gonna smash this workout. There's Gabby McGowan who is now passed. Haley Adams, Gabby McGowan who is now going to win event five. But, you know, as that first workout came out, I knew that uh, she had very good potential. And, and obviously, like, she went in, smashed it, and took her first ever event win at the CrossFit Games. If you'd show me all of the games events and be like, you know, where can Jacqueline get her best finish? There is no way I'd have mentioned on a 1RM sandbag clean. And honestly, when they announced the weights, I was like, I wouldn't struggle to get that, uh, that first one up. And we played about it a bit in the warm up, and I just said to John that, like, I do not have enough time to get this, like, technique down. I'm going to have to do it my way and then just try to get it up there, like, any way, you know, any way possible. And I guess this moment where, you know, you've got like Laura, Amanda, Danny, like all these bigger girls and Jacqueline standing there. And I think there were like six of them. And I was like, wow, you know, what is even happening? And all of a sudden, I think it wasn't one of the rounds, like 12 people went out. And that's when I started looking around. And I'm like, wow, you do quite okay. And it ends up being Jacqueline and Danny on this 1RM sandbag clean on a Saturday night at the games. It's almost 100 pounds more than her. There's a Dahlstrom and a half in the back right now. It's amazing! Jacqueline Dahlstrom is... Jacqueline kind of achieved a career highlight where she's standing in the Colosseum on a Saturday night with the whole Colosseum behind her screaming to get that sand back. You shouldn't put yourself down before the event, you know? Just go in with the open mind and see, see what you can do. That, that was my mind, like, that was how I approached every sandbag. It was like, kind of like that. It was telling to myself, it was like, okay, it's me and you, let's see what we can do, you know? And, and just in an event where it just was completely unexpected. And so, you know, I think that's something that will live with her ever and it's just without question like this uh, this incredible highlight from the games but we've uh, we've we've grown a lot from my 21 to 22 um, you know if you think if we go even further back to when I like first started working with the program John did a lot on his own and it was kind of just John it wasn't just John he had a few others kind of helping in the back uh, back as well but if you take that up, up until today where we have you know another three coaches four coaches actually uh, here that he's helping out and just having like a fresh set of eyes as well if i look back seven eight years ago how i feel i used to think about things you know i was very like outcome driven in the sense that it was all about your placing on the leaderboard and that is what we we worked hard to try and achieve whereas understanding now that the processes are very important, that people feel supported, not just in that you know, ultimate number on the leaderboard, but in the process of how they get there. And, and you know, something that I've said before, but I really start to believe more and more is that the journey is more important than the destination. And it's very easy to constantly get caught up in this destination. But right now, we're very focused on the journey, what we're building, and, and we're excited to see kind of what comes of that. I, I would like the programme to be known 
as you know the brand the training program the supported athletes in becoming the best they can be and when an athlete came on that you know that they grew as an athlete they grew as a person they grew in their business and and that's what i want uh, to be able to happen that everyone's who's a part of that ecosystem benefits grows and supports everyone else within that ecosystem you know this kind of whole positive feedback loop is something that we want to try and achieve and i think that w when i look back now i'm super happy to see everyone doing so well. you know for me it's one of the best things to see you know one of the coaches leading a session the athletes getting better from it people growing to see you guys being able to capture that and sometimes for me taking that step back and seeing how people are growing people are developing from you know not just the athletes but the coaches the behind the scenes uh, that's something that um, is very special um, and I'd kind of like to capture as the legacy